I want to do this podcast now, but it is leading to something I'm going to do in the next couple of podcasts, which is called double angle identities. Now, the cool thing about this though, is that I'm looking at solving now, which means I want an actual value, just like we solved it before, right? Okay, so what I wanna do here, very simple, take a look. First things first, try to use one of the identities that we've already discussed to see if we can actually simplify this. Look for what I see here, the pattern. Look, this is sine, cos, cos, sine. So I've got a sine, cos, cos, sine here. I've got a sine, cos, cos sine here but don't forget this is subtraction well that eliminates that one he's gone because of the fact that that's addition ah there's my subtraction one so notice what we've got here this actually fits there's your a there's your b value there's your a there's your b value so what do i got i have sine of a minus b equaling to one now, traditionally, all you got to do is just kind of put these guys together. This is going to be the sine at 2x equals to 1. But hold on, hold on, hold on. I've never solved anything with, this, with a 2x in it before. Yeah, you're right. But here's the cool thing. Look at this. You've got a domain restriction now. Dun, 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 dun. But wait a second. This domain restriction is just for x. Oh, my God, Joe, what do I do? It's actually quite simple. All you have to do is change that now to 2x. So that means everything gets doubled. Well, what's the double of 0? Uh, 0, look at this, equals 2. That's now x, not anymore. It's 2x because I'm solving for 2x. That's the only trick that you have to know with double angles, okay? Is you've got to change this to a 2x. And then this is no longer 2 pi, it's actually 4 pi. So you're actually solving this for two rotations. Oh my goodness. Yep, you're solving it for two rotations, all the way up to four pi. So how do we go about doing this? Super simple. Look, where is sine? Just ignore this two X for a second. Where is sine equal to one? Well, okay, sine is equal to one. That's one of the quadrantial ones. That's the quadrantial point right there at zero, one. So what is that? Okay, well, I know that that is pi over 2. Okay, but now I have to do this for not just, yeah, not just one rotation of pi, so I can write this down and saying that my first answer is pi over 2, but according to my double angle, I have to go at least one more time around, which makes this, oh no, but wait, it's not a coterminal angle. As a coterminal angle. I just went one more revolution around. So all I have to do is add 2 pi to this. Well, I know 2 pi times by 2 times by 2. This is going to be pi over 2 plus 4 pi over 2 to give me 5 pi over 2. So my other angle then is 5 pi over 2. That's what my sine equals to, right? But think about this. My sine may equal to that, but I still haven't finished. Because this means I've gotten rid of my sine, but I still have this equaling to 2x. Oh man, what do I do now? Simple, divide everything by 2, right? That gives you x equals, divide the pi over 2 by 2, which is the same as multiplying by a half, right? So this is going to be pi over 4. How about this one? This one, divide by 2, which is multiplying by a half. This is going to be now 5 pi over 4. So you actually have dun, da, da, two answers in this double angle. That's how you do this. And this is kind of a nice little uh, extra that we're going to be doing starting the next podcast. All right, good to go.